Welcome back to Speed Build Saturday. I'm your host, Fake Gamer Girl, and the way that I said this made this sound way more professional than it actually is. Today, we are going to be building a build where every single room is a different mental illness that I have had. Oh boy. To be fair, I thought of this video idea just because I thought it would be funny as hell, but at the same time, I felt like it could also be really helpful. So there you go. <laughs> I've always been a very private person. I don't like to tell people things. I just don't. I don't know you and it's none of my business. However, I feel like even though it's not mental health awareness month i think we should be aware of mental health all the time like i am aware of it all the time because i have it all the time okay it's not just here for a month and then it goes away and the rest of y'all are getting mentally ill as well so i thought you know what you might appreciate this or not i don't know but before we get into it a couple disclaimers one i will remember hopefully to put some resources in the description if you're not feeling okay if you need somebody to talk to always remember that don't rant to people you don't know online also don't tell people that you don't know about your mental health problems sometimes, okay? Because very evil, bad people will take advantage of that, okay? Talk to a trusted friend, talk to a trusted adult, someone at your school, someone at your work, someone in your contacts. I don't know, but you can reach out because you're never alone. Second of all, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more in depth about what I deal with, and it's totally okay if we have the same thing and we experience it differently, okay? I just wanna throw that out there. You can have the same mental illness as someone else and experience it very differently and experience very different things, okay? No gatekeeping here is all I'm going to say. So first we are starting with the exterior and I am using the exterior to show that I used to deal with and sometimes still do deal with agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is the fear of leaving your house. If you have agoraphobia, this is a perfect gotcha to someone who calls you homophobic because it's like, I'm not afraid of homes. Actually, I am terrified of leaving mine. For me, agoraphobia definitely manifested after a very bad situation happens in my life. And for me, it was more of a symptom of other mental illnesses that I was dealing with and because of those symptoms I was afraid of leaving my house and it's not because I'm like oh my god if I leave my house someone might stab me it's not something like that it was more that I was afraid of experiencing my mental health symptoms sim sim English. I was afraid of experiencing my mental health symptoms outside of my house, which sounds kind of weird, I guess. But for me, it was like, I'm already struggling with X, Y, Z, but at least I'm struggling at home. You know, like if I need to lie down, I can lie down. If I feel disoriented or anxious or something happens, at least I'm home. But I had the fear of experiencing that outside. It, like nothing changes. It's just the situation that I'm in is the same, but where I'm experiencing the situation is different. And that made the whole whole difference to me. Like, I'd be like, I'm not going outside. I am not going outside because what if I feel stressed outside? <laughs> and I know the way I'm talking about it sounds like I'm trivializing it. It's my mental illness and I can express it how I like and humor it helps me cope, okay? <laughs> I definitely think that lockdown and COVID made it 10 times worse because it was like, okay, I'm forced to be at home. That's fine. And then when restrictions lifted, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> I feel like I've kind of gotten over it now, kind of. I think for me, what really helped was just fucking forcing myself to go outside and then being like, wow, nothing bad happened when I was outside. Or if something bad happened, I'd be like, well, I got over it. Like I dealt with it. And for me, my way of coping was having a record of times it was okay. So I'd go outside, force myself to go outside. I did not want to do it, but I'd go do it. And then I'd come home and be like, that was a success. I did it. And so the next time I'm too stressed to go out outside, I'll be like, well, I did it last time. I did it that time. I did it five times. And then it kind of like you build up like a resume of every time you've been outside and it's been fine. And again, even if you had a panic attack when you were outside, you eventually go home. Like outside isn't permanent. You, well, I mean, okay, sometimes it is and that's really unfortunate, but you know what I mean, okay? <laughs> you know, like you will go home eventually. You will find an inside eventually. And every single time you're like, well, I dealt with it last time. There's no way it's gonna happen 15 times in a row. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I do find my agoraphobia does come back the longer I spend not going outside. So I try to make it a habit. You know, you just fucking get your ass outside. You know, we have now moved on to the living room and I have made living room PTSD. My gamer hint for you is whenever somebody tells you they have PTSD, don't fucking ask them why. Why would you do that? Hey, what is the event or events that happened in your life that gave you a mental illness? Why don't you tell me, bitch, I don't know you. And even if I do know you, if I haven't told you, you don't have the right to know. Sorry, I had to get that out of the way. So I know some of y'all mean well, but it's none of your business, okay? <laughs> so PTSD manifests in many different 
different ways and people will get them for many different things. It's not just something that soldiers get, you know, you don't have to go to war to have PTSD. Anything could happen in your life and anybody could get this. I'm not trying to scare you or fear monger you, by the way. I didn't mean it like that. It's not meant to be something foreboding. It's just like destroying some stigmas about it. Let's, let's go with that. I think PTSD is something that is ongoing. I know some people eventually, not necessarily cure it, but learn to live with it in a way that it really doesn't affect you. Almost always done through therapy. But the one thing about PTSD that is like so signifying is the idea of flashbacks. Because I know a lot of us have been through some bad times in our life, and that doesn't mean you have PTSD either. Sometimes it does, but you have bad memories. But with PTSD, flashbacks are kind of like bad memories, but you're stuck in them. Like the best way I can describe it is like for three minutes, you are like time traveled back to a certain situation, a certain event, a certain feeling. Even sometimes it's not even a situation. Sometimes you just feel the exact feeling and you're there, like you're back there. And it's like one of the most horrifying, distressing things because then you come out of it and you're like, okay, I know I'm not there anymore, but you still feel in danger. It's very weird. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to describe it. But for the actual room, I made it very like old timey, like very vintage furniture because like it feels like time traveling. That's all I can say. There are pictures everywhere on these walls. So it's like the memories are always there. And then like just so many antiques everywhere. So it feels like it's built up everywhere and it's so crowded and I've blocked the door because it feels like you can't get it. I, it's like, it's sad. Okay, it's sad, but this is my interpretation of it, I guess. Sometimes it just feels so suffocating and you really feel like you're back there. But luckily I'm at a point now where I feel like I can do my day to day and it doesn't affect me every single day. So it does get better. It really does, but you do have to put the work in. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere if it wasn't for my therapist. I bet some of you didn't think I had that, and which is why another thing that I, if you're gonna take anything from this video, um, which wouldn't be the build by the way, because I, I will tell you why later, it's a fucking crazy story, but you never know what people are going through. So just like be fucking nice. I don't know. Anyway, we're moving on to the kitchen and this is okay. This is a doozy. I also have OCD and this is the perfect room because this is where it flares up the most for me. So OCD is not just clean freak syndrome. It's not like, oh, I like things symmetrical. Shut the fuck up. That's not what it means. OCD is basically where you have a very anxious thought, an intrusive thought, like something that you cannot control and you get so anxious about it that you do a compulsion to try and soothe that thought. So for example, let me give you something that I deal with, right? I am terrified of dying in a car crash. Horrible thought. I am so anxious and there's nothing I can do about it because I can't control other drivers. So what am I going to do? I am going to pet my cat exactly 16 times. Has to be 16 times, only the number 16. Any number divisible by four, eight is better. But if I pet my cat only five times or anything that's divisible by five only, bad. Something bad's gonna happen, I have to fix it. It sounds so stupid, doesn't it? Well, that's my fucking brain, thanks OCD. See, there are different types of OCD. Some people have relationship OCD, some people have contamination OCD, which is another one that I deal with. And I feel like the kitchen is definitely like the worst place for me because I'm terrified of dying. I'm terrified of getting sick and dying. What's a way that you can get sick and die? Well, obviously from germs. And that's where like the cleaning comes in. So that's where that stereotype comes from. I do have the whole thing where everything needs to be clean. I do have that, but it's not the only type of OCD. And it pisses me off when people are like, I'm so OCD. I like things clean. Bitch, you don't have to be OCD to like things clean. To be OCD, you have to think you're literally going to die and everybody you love is going to die if you don't flick the light switch fucking 16 times or anything divisible by eight and that you clean everything. Sorry, I got a little heated there. <laughs> Obviously, everybody's OCD manifests differently. Some people don't have contamination OCD. Some people don't have numbers OCD, but this is just my interpretation. Any case, we're gonna move on to the bathroom and I just picked depression for this one because I fucking hate being in the bathroom. <laughs> I just made the bathroom look really depressing and like kind of messy because when you're depressed, you just you can't be bothered to do anything. Okay, I am not gonna fucking clean my house when I'm depressed. Okay, I barely have the energy to like want to wake up in the morning and you're gonna ask me to clean? No, it's not gonna happen. And especially when I was young, I feel like the bathroom was kind of a safe space because when you go into a bathroom, nobody's allowed to go in with you. You know, you go to school, you go to the bathroom, like you're in a stall. That is your safe space. And that's where I'd cry because I didn't want people to see me crying. So it's just like, I don't know, it, it really fit for me. Also, just like I, everything shower is depressing. I don't want to do that. That is way too much work. Also, real quick before I forget, did you know that every single week on the channel we have a build competition where I give you guys a prompt, you guys build it, upload it to the gallery, and I review those builds in a video. <sighs> Using the hashtag that shows up on the screen right now, I want you guys to build me your scariest build. I want you to terrify me. I want to be so afraid that I don't want to keep going through your build. The deadline to submit your 
build is going to be Saturday, October 5th. So get your builds in by then. And please double check the spelling of the hashtag. Because if you don't spell it right, I'm not going to see it. And if I don't see it, I'm not going to review it. And if I don't review it, it's not going to show up in my video. And then you're going to come here and leave me a hate comment. You know the fucking drill at this point. Okay. I have a migraine. <laughs> and finally, we're on to the last room, which is the bedroom. And I've chosen the bedroom to be anxiety. Not because like uh, bedrooms give me anxiety, I guess. Again, I'm not homophobic, not scared of houses. I'm agoraphobic. I love houses so much I can't leave them. I just like, I needed a bedroom in this build and I have anxiety and anxiety to me feels very loud, which is why I went with like a bright red situation. It just feels very loud and cluttered. It's just like all of these thoughts and fears everywhere and they feel so over encompassing. Like you can't really see two feet in front of you because there's like a bajillion little fucking scary, like Whoa, what if this happens? Even though like it's never fucking happened to me in my life. It hasn't happened to anybody I know, but oh my God, it could happen to me. You know, fucking mental illness sometimes makes you feel so fucking stupid. I swear to God, it's not stupid suffering with it. Like you don't have a choice. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's like, why is my brain doing this to me? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just the girl, okay? Like <laughs> now about this build specifically, I'm actually so pissed because this is the second build I have lost in two weeks. I don't know what it is with The Sims 4, but I got stuck, okay? Basically I save my builds when I exit to manage households, okay? And when I do the little montage at the end of it, I always film it in live mode because in live mode, I can change the lights. Well, tell me for some reason why I got stuck in an infinite fucking loading screen just trying to get out of this build, which meant that I couldn't save the fucking build. So I can't upload it to the gallery and I can't go back in my game to film a montage because the build isn't there because you're dumb ass fucking favorite content creator. That's me, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. And if I'm not, I am now. Didn't save the build because she's kind of stupid. So thanks Sims for anyway.